like the music? It was, it was Spring from the Four Seasons by Vivaldi. When we think of spring, we think of something new, beautiful, coming back to a new life. So what is new and hopefully beautiful in the field of genetics and how that might be related to in print? Well, it's easy to associate genetics and imprint. There are a lot of things in our life that depend on our genes. If you think about the way our body works, the way it is structured, the way we behave, and the way we get sick. If you go back with your memory to your science classes in high school and college, you'll probably remember a very simple equation. One gene equal one trait. And by extension, one mutant gene equal one disease. You remember that? Well, I want you to visualize that concept. Have it there. You got it? Good. Now trash it. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, the concept is correct. In fact, it has been the seed of medical genetics. But just like the seed must die to bear much fruit, so we need to go beyond that concept to fully understand the genetic impact, the genetic imprint on our lives. The problem with that concept is that it's very, very limited. It only applies to those conditions where a single gene mutation is sufficient to cause a disease. But these conditions are just one small end of a large spectrum of disorders. These are just the few cases in which the genetic effect is all or nothing. But in fact, in this spectrum, large spectrum of disorders, the genetic factors can play different degrees of imprint can have a different amount on impact. And in fact, the other conditions that do not follow the concept of one mutant gene equal one disease are the result of a complex interaction of multiple factors, both genetic and environmental factors, and therefore are called complex disorders. What is an example of a complex disorder? Well, let's think about diabetes. We do know that there are important environmental factors that play a role in diabetes, like diet and exercise. So what about genetics? Well, maybe some of you have heard a friend you know, complaining, how is that you know, my wife and I come from the same town, we went to school together, college together, we have the same lifestyle, but only I got diabetes and I had to give up ice cream. Yeah. Well, the answer is, it's in your genes. Well, another example is cancer. We know there are a lot of important environmental factors in cancer, like sunlight exposure, cigarette smoking. But what about genetics? Well, it is possible to determine the risk of developing certain types of cancer just by assessing the presence of certain mutations in your genes. So that's a pretty big factor too. You see, with these complex disorders, we're changing our perspective of the role of genetics in our life. We're moving from determinism, which is something written in stone, to predisposition which is something in which the genetic factors may play a more or less important role, but they always need one or more environmental factors to actually cause the disease. We're also moving from conditions that are extremely rare, something in the order of one out of tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, to something that is way more common, something in the order of one out of tens or one out of a hundred. Another example of complex disorder is autism. Autism is a condition that still represents an unsolved riddle under many points of view, especially because children with autism present with a lot of different signs, with a lot of diversity. The genetic component of autism has been proved by several studies. It's there. But the problem is there are way too many genes, over 800 associated with autism, and the mechanisms are still not clear. So what goes wrong in our brain in order to have autism? Well, I want you to imagine our brain development as a lake receiving water from different rivers. So we have a lake here in the center, and these are all rivers. Each river is bringing a different type of water, represented by these different colors. And each river and the lake are actually representing the different components that need to interact properly to have a normal brain development. We might have a structural component, a metabolic component, a vascular component, you name it. So when they all work together nicely, we have a combination and we have a normal brain. So, genetic investigations of the cause of autism have always followed the old concept of one mutant gene equal one disease. And therefore, we've been looking for single changes affecting single pathways that might cause a clearly recognizable difference. So, like in this case, 
it's easy to spot, right? And so when we look at the final product, when we look at the brain developing in the presence of this change, it's easy to tell the difference. So we can tell not only that this is not a normal brain, but also sometimes the change is so typical that it will allow us to track back the pathway or the river where the mutation occurred. That's nice. But unfortunately, so far, this approach has not been sufficient to solve the autism riddle yet. So, we changed our perspective. What if, instead of looking for major changes in individual pathways, one at a time, we look at all the rivers and the lake together? After all, if we're dealing with a complex disorder, why would we expect a simple solution? So, in this slide, all the colors have been changed. Slightly. It's just a matter of one shade lighter or darker. So if you look at that, and if you focus on each individual pathway, you might think that these minor changes are really insignificant. They don't really make a lot of difference. And also if you look at the whole picture after the changes, before the changes, how many differences can you spot? And maybe a couple. Now you can see something up here, but not really that much. And if you look at the single river by itself, it's a no, it didn't change, really. But when we look at the final product, this is before, this is after. Now you can see the difference. It's the cumulative effect of all the small changes. So what have we done to deal with this complex model? We changed our strategy. We looked beyond the single gene, beyond the single protein, beyond the single pathway. Nowadays, technology has provided us with the tools to look at all genes at once, which is genomics, all proteins at once, which is proteomics and all the metabolic pathways at once, which is metabolomics. And that's what we did. We applied metabolomics to study the metabolic profile of cells from individuals with autism to look for any possible abnormality. And we believe that in this way, we will be not only able to detect any relevant change, but also to understand how these changes interact among themselves and how their interactions will eventually lead to autism. Because the goal is not only to be able to tell the difference between these two brains, the normal one and the one with the clear pathway, but also to tell the difference between this one and this one, where you cannot track back the pathway where the mutation occurred. Because, in fact, there is not a single cause of mutation. There are all small changes that might look insignificant, taken individually, but all together in the wider picture, they make sense. So, that's not all, because this approach has changed not only the way we look at autism, but has changed only the way we look at the genetic impact or imprint on our everyday lives. It's telling us more about our genome. It's telling us more about ourselves. And it's providing us with information about how our body works, how it gets sick, and how it reacts to environmental factors, such as drugs or germs. This massive amount of information is already changing medicine, calling for a more personalized approach that will consider the way our genes work among themselves and with the environment, and will eventually lead to better drugs that are more efficient, with more tra targets, and with fewer side effects. Because in the end, the lesson we're learning from autism and the other complex disorders is that we're all different. Each and every one of us carries his or her own unique genetic profile. Therefore, the goal of the new personalized medicine is not simply to treat a disease, but it's to design the best possible cure for each and every human being. Thank you very much.